So let's talk about the dual method. Again, grabbing straight from uh, the textbook, I've got the fact that the dual problem, it's talking about an objective function that should be minimized. This objective function definitely fits that. All the variables are non-negative, check. And all the other linear constraints are rewritten so that everything is greater than or equal to a constant. Greater than or equal to a constant, greater than or equal to a constant. So the three requirements for me to have a dual problem have definitely been met by this equation. Here's the process that we do when we're talking about the dual method. For the dual method, we generally talk about the difference between a primal versus the dual problem. So right here's the primal. It's asking me to minimize something. Instead, I'm going to cook up something different that's intricately related to this, solve that, and by solving the answer to the dual problem, which we'll be talking about maximization, and we'll solve using standard simplex, we'll actually get our answer to our minimization problem. So here's what we do. The first step is to create a little bit of a, an intermediate. Um, it's not quite a tableau yet. It just has x, it's got uh, y, and it has um, my area for my, my constants. And I put in my three equations that I've got here. So I've got 1, 2, and 4. I've got 3, 2, and 6. And then I also have 2 and 5. Once I've got this, I next am going to use matrix transposition. So matrix transpose, which Transpose just says, I rotate everything around this line. And when I rotate everything around that line, I'm going to get some different variables in x and y, and they're going to be called u and v. So my 1 and my 2 aren't going to change. But this 3 and this 2 definitely are going to switch places. This 4 and this 2 again are going to switch places, and the 5 and the 6 are going to switch places. So now I have my dual problem. And my dual problem that we're dealing with right here is now going to give me a new set of equations. I'm now trying to maximize an equation that's 4u plus 6v, subject to these sets. I used to have greater than or equal to, so now I'm going to have less than or equal to. So u plus v is going to be less than or equal to 2. 2u plus 2v is going to be less than or equal to 5. And u and v are going to be positive. So now that I've got this, we do our usual simplex method process. So cool thing is, once you've got this part down of the dual problem, from here on out, it's just like a normal simplex problem. So I do minus 4u minus 6v plus p equals 0. And now I'm ready to stick everything into my transpose, where I have u and v. Because I have two inequality equations here, I'm going to have two slack variables. I'm going to call these x and y, but these are my slack variables, just like always. I've got my constant p, and then I have my row of constant functions. Constant variables. Others, I don't know, numbers. So now it's time to enter in things. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 2. We've got 5, 0, 1, 0. We've got the numbers 2, 2. And let's see. Made a little error in copying everything down, so there's a little 3 here. And that means this guy right here should be a 3. I don't see any other errors I'm making. All right. 
Um, and then, of course, lastly, I have minus 4, minus 6, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now, just as an aside, we're going to uh, learn from our solving of non-standard problems in the, the next section in a second that it's always nice to check over here and see are there positive uh, numbers here. There are. So this is definitely going to be going just fine. And so I do my usual simplex method process. So let's do that. This is my most negative number down here, which means this uh, column I've just highlighted is the one that I'm going to be looking at for finding my um, pivot point. So I take 2 over 3, and I compare that with 5 over 2. I don't know, this is about 0.666. And this guy right here, 5 over 2, is a number that's definitely bigger than 1. So this one right here is going to be my smaller uh, ratio. And as soon as I know that I've got my smaller ratio going on there, well, then I know that 3 is going to be the element I'm going to pivot around. So the first thing I do is do 1 third times row 1. I get my u, my v, my x, my y, my p, the constants. Row 1 is going to change to 1 third, 1, 1 third, 0, 0, 2 thirds. Everybody else stays the same. Negative 4, negative 6, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now I have to do some row operations because I am trying to pivot around this number. So I think I need to do row 2 minus 2 row 1, and I need to do row 3 plus 6 row 1. Uh, U, V, X, Y, P, and constants. Row one's not changing, so I just write all that down just as it was. And now let's do our row operation. So row two minus two or one. Two minus two thirds. It's going to leave me with one and one third, which is four thirds. Two minus two gives me zero. One minus two thirds leaves me with negative two thirds. Uh, 1 minus 0 is just 1, 0, 5 minus 4 thirds, I'm going to write that out, 5 over 1 minus 4 over 3, 15 over 3 minus 4 leaves me with 11 thirds. Now down here on the bottom row, I'm going to do row 3 plus 6 row 1, negative 4 plus 6 thirds is negative 4 plus 2, which is just negative 2. It's negative 6 and plus 6 is 0. And I have plus 6 thirds, which is just 2. Got 0 and 0. And I've got 1. And then finally, 6 times 2 is 12 thirds. So I have 12 thirds, and that's the same thing as just 4. OK. Now, keep on going. This time, this is my most negative entry down here. It's my only entry. So this is the column I'm looking at. I'm checking. One of these I'm going to pivot with. 2 thirds divided by 1 third. The same thing as times 3, which gives me 2. And 11 over 3 divided by 4 over 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 3 over 4. That gives me 11 over 4. Since 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 times 3 is 12, this is almost 3. It's definitely bigger than 2, which means I'm pivoting around this number. So now I'm going to multiply the top row by 3. X really got myself in the habit of putting X's first, but this is dual problems. So I've got U, V, X, Y, and T. I've got my constants. All right, so one third times three gives me one. Three, one, zero, zero, two. 
all my other things stay exactly as they were. Four thirds, zero, negative two thirds, one, zero, 11 thirds. Just copying down that second row as it is and copying down the third row as it is as well. And now I have to pivot still around this point. So I'm going to be doing row two minus four thirds. And I'm going to be doing row three plus two row one. U, V, X, Y, P, constants. And row one's not changing, so let's copy her down. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, row three first. That one looks kinda easy. I've got negative two plus two times one, which gives me zero. I've got zero plus three times two, which gives me six. I've got 2 plus 2 times 1, and that gives me 4. I've got 0 plus 2 times 0, which gives me 0. And I have 1 plus 2 times 1 gives me 1. And over here I have 4 plus 2 times 2 gives me 8. Now before I even bother to write down what would be in this area right here, here's the cool thing about the dual problem. Normally, I would go ahead and add up this, this row two here and calculate that out. But remember, for one thing, when you're solving things under the normal simplex process, as, long, as soon as this is positive, we're done. And here's the cool thing about the dual problem, because remember, we are using the normal simplex process, and normal simplex process does say I'm done. However, I'm solving the dual problem. And the dual problem says this, as soon as the normal simplex process is done, here's where I get my answer. For x, my answer is this one. For y, my answer is this one. Notice they're right below these things in the columns. And my answer for my profit equation is just as it always is. So, I know my x-coordinate is 4, I know my y-coordinate equals 0, and I know my cost equation is going to be optimized at 8. And this is my answer for my primal problem. So I used simplex method on a dual problem, but it turned out I got an answer for my primal problem 